both are from the London company. Mm-hmm. Uh, so how much time did you have to rehearse with this company and uh, what was weeks. it transitioning from that production to this new one? Uh, five days off before we started the four week rehearsal, is that right? Yeah. Yes, yeah. that's right. Yeah. yeah, four weeks rehearsing here and so I hadn't done the show for about a year and a half, two years in London and usually after I finish a job I forget it within about th- three or four days. It just goes out of my mind. I just go home back to my family and I forget all about it. So it was nice learning a fresh new version of the show. So it's been very exciting to have a restaged version. It's great. Do you, there are, the props are more intricate and there's, there are more details I find. At least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> do you prefer that? I especially like the, the baguette within uh, Master of the House. Yeah, there's a lot of business in it right now. Um, and yeah, it is. It's, just, it's nice to add new bits of detail and stuff. I suppose to make it realistic as well, it sort of feels more filmic. Like there's more, you get a more sense of the actual place of where they're living in terms of the lighting and and the, the, the scenery, I suppose, that's around. Yeah, so it's, it's very exciting. Thank you. Uh, you know, I wouldn't say no. You know, as we know, Valjean is sort of like the pinnacle role, um, you know, that of our industry, you know. Um, but saying that, you know, I watch Simon. Simon is a wonderful mentor on and off stage to watch go about his business. But, um, you know, who knows where I'll be at that time in my life. You know, I might be a stay-at-home dad by then. I'm not sure. But um, it's a wonderful role. And I actually played Jean Valjean when I was 18 at high school, which was pretty funny. They painted my hair white, basically, <laughs> for the end. But um, they couldn't hide my baby face. But, uh, you know, it's, it's a wonderful show. And we often talk about people in this current cast who play different roles than they were in the production 10 or 15 years ago or they're now in the creative part of it and um, I think it's one of those shows that it kind of it gets into you and I have no doubt that if that opportunity comes up later down the track that I will I'll grab it. Uh, Paul, what was your role in the because you you came from the London company. Yes. So what was your role there and how was it transitioning to Marius in this production? Um, so I played a character called um, Jolly um, and they're totally different because um, Marius has come from aristocracy and um, Jolly is um, a medical student. They're quite, they're, they're very different, different people. Jolly is a hypochondriac <laughs> and worries about everything um, and so I think he was, he was a lot more sensitive the Marius um, and now playing Marius um, yeah I'm, just, I'm finding so many elements in him that I think I much prefer actually <laughs> in a way although I, I found the character of Jolie extremely beautiful um, obviously the, the text is there there's a lot more to explore about Marius there isn't so much in the book about Jolie so I had to create the character myself but to be able to have it in the book there and I can just kind of yeah flower in this character so you've read the book um, mm-hmm. is it a requirement before you join the show that you have to like, it's probably not a requirement but it's highly suggested okay. that you <laughs> read it and mm. like Paul said there's so, so much description that obviously you can't fit into a three-hour musical um, in the book so it was I found it um, invaluable to, to read that and have so much detail um, about your character and about their complete journey from kind of, uh, from, especially for Eponine and Cosette, from childhood to, to the end, we kind of have like a full life story to access. So it was, yeah, really helpful. Uh, Carrie, do you envision yourself playing Fontaine in the future? Because, I mean, many yeah. actresses who have portrayed Eponine have gone have on gone to, on to play that. Fontaine. Yeah. yeah, I mean, she's actually got one of my favourite stories. I love watching yeah. Rachel Ann go and listening to her sing that every day. Oh my goodness, I could only <laughs> imagine being like that. Um, yeah. But she's, you know, it's such an incredible character. And a lot of the um, creatives say about Les Mis, when you start working on it, you actually just can't 
let it go you know and so you do like a lot of audience members come and watch it time and time again a lot of actors and directors and um, musicians will do it many many times throughout their life um, and so yeah maybe who knows maybe we'll all be back you know the uh, 50th anniversary I'll be volunteering you'll be Madam tonight, Madam tonight. Yeah. Um, you'll be Javert <laughs> won't you on that Oh, give Javert. <laughs> Javert a go. Val Jonah. I've heard. I don't know how he does it. What's yeah. the hardest part in portraying your roles? Uh, I find it quite difficult to, uh, in the short amount of time that I have uh, to show my character, to kind of show Cosette with the full amount of depth that I know that she has and to really make that come across and um, and really kind of take a stand as that character um, and uh, being able to shake the show off at the end of the night as well is hard because it's you know so heartbreaking and I mean I probably have one of the happiest journeys in the show and still there's so much you know, death and loss going on around me as well that it's, um, it can be hard to shake that off at the end of the night. Um, Marius has got such a huge journey um, throughout the show so to, to go from being a fighter into a by chance hopeless romantic and then he, he has to go back into a fighter and then he is in despair because uh, and in um, survivor's guilt and then to have to come out of that and then fall back into a hopeless romantic um, it's it's quite a challenge um, emotionally and stamina wise to keep that to keep that going um, not just like as an actor but as a human like it's I'm tired I'm so tired by the end of the show so I've got to, got to make sure that I'm at 100% at the start of the show and then gradually I can find ways of just easing down that percentage um, for my breakdown and empty chairs and then build it back up for my wedding. <laughs> that makes sense? Just get yeah. married every day. It's beautiful. It's a process. It's a real process. It's a process. That's it. Um, I think for Eponine as well, you know, she has such a story that a lot of people really relate to and they do really feel for her and it's hard for me to not get too um, wrapped up in it and to really actually like you have to feel that every night as an actress but then to step away and still be Carrie afterwards like it's hard not to have like a character hangover a character hangover that's totally <laughs> what it is yeah. so Filipinos love the movie adaptation of Lame so mm. how would you differentiate the stage because I know it's very different but how what would the Filipinos be expecting from the stage version uh, well, everything's live, so you're going to yeah. get something different every single time you watch it. We had fans on the, um, well, I mean, all over the world, people have seen the show hundreds of times because you do, there's something different every single night. It's a live orchestra there who are so incredibly talented, half Filipino, half Australian, and it's just... I mean, it's magic. There's nothing quite like going to the theatre. You can't really compare it. And I, the movie was beautiful in the sense that you got to see the, the really see the actual kind of world that they would have been in. But there's nothing like live theatre. You can't beat it. It's just so special, and for the audience to kind of feel like they're a part of that. And yeah. especially in this theatre, the audience is kind of right there, yeah. and so it's like they're really in that world with you. Yeah, I'm Emily for. Yes. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, your portrayal of Cosette in the final scene in the epilogue, you playfully you wag your finger at um, Valjean, which brought me to tears. Oh, thank you. Um, and I'd never seen that before. So, did you and Simon have a little bit of that? To get, did you work on that together? How much? Yeah, we did, and and I'm so lucky to to have played with the role with him for, for so long, and we kind of um, can really bring our relationship to our characters because we're very close, and to kind of because that's kind of us as people, and to kind of bring that playfulness and and that um, that real love between between them and, and you know I, I, it's always so much more interesting to see someone trying to play happy to, to be happy than it is to see someone be sad so it's um I would rather try and, and be up and try and keep him going than, than real, really fall into that despair so um 
uh, and it just felt natural for us to to be at that point, even you know, at in his very last breaths. Mm. Yeah. Hello. How have your how your experience with Manila been, and how have you been enjoying the previews? Oh gosh, um, it's it's been scarce at the moment because we haven't had much time, to be honest, to to kind of really savor Manila other than getting in a coach and <laughs> traveling from where we are to here. Um, but it's, it's been great, it's been a bit full on. It's been, our, our schedule has been kind of quite, quite busy. Um, and uh, the previews we started last week, which have been great, and we're just, I think, all looking forward to our proper opening night tomorrow. Is this your first time here? Really? First time in Manila, yeah, absolutely. Um, and it's been really cool because I'll be able to meet up with a, a friend of mine, Ema Castro, who's, who is here. So uh, I'll be able to see her for the first time. I haven't seen her for ages, so that'll be cool. <laughs> no, that'll be great. You've been with Les Mis for so long. Yeah. You've done the original production. Yeah. And you even debuted the, this production, yeah. the anniversary of Chabert. Yes. And how has your... Because I saw the show on Friday. Oh, okay. And I, I noticed you had this maniacal laugh. Yeah. And it's it's absent from the cast recording. How, yeah. How much is your role as your Javert uh, changed over? It the changes years? a lot. I think it changes a lot just because of age and experience and familiarity with the piece. Because you know, even though you might know a piece of material very well, your interpretation of it will often change when you mature or. Um, or when you become more experienced as an actor and you just see different things or you feel the presentation, you know, actually go, needs to go a different way rather than one that you thought was the right way before. So, and I think it's, and I think when, you, when you're more involved with international casts as well, everyone brings something very, very different to the storytelling. And you, so you, you, you see different, um, you have you have very different um, experiences to kind of pull from, and how people feel about the piece, and 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 so from that point of view, it kind of gives you a little bit more information to delve a little deeper into, you know, the character that you, you know, I've I've spent a lot a lot of time kind of finessing, I suppose. You've been doing this for so long, don't you get tired? Oh yes, absolutely. Of course you do. Um, you know, it'd be wrong of me to say that. No, it's fine. You know, I love it. Um, you know, when you're doing something, you know, the, the, repeating the same thing, you have to find ways of being able to kind of to battle that um, ultimately. But it's, but it's, what's incredible for me is that fact that I've, with this production, had the opportunity to perform it in, you know, the United Kingdom, in Paris, Canada, Broadway, and now Manila. So. From that point of view, I mean, it's yeah. I mean, that keeps it very, very exciting, you know. And then obviously Singapore, and you know, and then who knows thereafter. But uh, yeah, it does make it very exciting. With all of your experiences, my Rob, what has been the highlight? Gosh, I think. Okay, so I think the highlight so far, apart from the O2 concert that we did. Um, Last year I was doing some concerts with Colm Wilkinson, the original Jean Valjean in Japan. And we got invited to go and see uh, the Japanese production of Les Miserables, this version that everyone's seeing here in Manila. And sitting next to Colm, watching this incredible performance, um, the storytelling in Japan was just something I've never seen before, that their commitment to storytelling was immense. Um, and that was, but every now and then I'm kind of looking across thinking, that's Carl Wilkinson that's there next to me, you know. And it's, you know and, but it's allowed, it's given me lots of moments like that, you know, the O2 wow. concert, when we did um, the Windsor Castle concert, you know, many, many years ago. And it's, yeah, I've had lots of moments. So I think maybe Les Mis in one go has been a special moment, yeah. Many actors who have portrayed the Phantom have also been able to play Valjean. Yeah. Is that something that you'd be open to? I'm not a Valjean. Because you're not a Valjean. I'm not a Valjean. No, that's not what I do. 
Um, you know, there are some fantastic people who play Valjean, like Simon Gleason, who's with us in this. Um, and obviously, I've had the uh, I've been very lucky to perform with some great Valjeans, John Owen Jones, Ramin Karamloo, and Alfie Bow. Um, so from that point of view, no. But when you know, I I know what I do, and Javert is what I do. Um, you know, and I thank you. Um, and I enjoy it. I, he's a darker character. He's, his journey is, uh, is even bigger than Valjean's, I think, and that's actually more exciting as an actor. Gosh. Um, I don't see myself playing in Les Mis for much longer. I don't think so, no. I think it's, it's, maybe it's time to, uh, to let other people fill the boots. <laughs> so to speak, and to wave that truncheon. Um, but you know, I've had a very incredibly, wonderfully long run with it. So I think it's, and you know, it would be fair. You know, you kind of think oh, I should let other people enjoy Javert. So um, yeah, I, I have no idea. <laughs> Who knows? I would love to play Trunchbull and Matilda, but that's something completely different. <laughs> so there we go. Um, in the past two years, you've been in the twenty-fifth anniversary celebration of Miss Saigon, yes. the 30th of Linus, <laughs> and mm -hmm. now you're bringing the show yes. home. Tell us a little about how about how those experiences have been for you. Oh my gosh, I feel so, so blessed. I, I am very, very grateful that, you know, I was able to, to do the 25th anniversary and the 30th anniversary um, of both Miss Saigon and Les Miserables. <sighs> Parang, totoo ba to? Parang nakaplano lahat, ano? After after a year of doing Miss Saigon, I was like, what should I do next? Um, I was actually tempted to extend for another year in Miss Saigon, but deep inside, I like, parang there is something else that I need to do. And then, yun nga, I heard about the addition of Les Miserables, then I tried it. Kumbaga, parang nakaplano lahat, ano? and I was just going with the flow. Um, and now, sabi nga ni Ka Mr. Cameron, eh, naka, ano, absent muna ako sa London, kumbaga, nandito muna ako sa Pilipinas sa ngayon. Kumbaga, nakaplano lahat eh. And hanggang ngayon, hindi ako makapaniwala na this is really happening. Yeah. But after Les Mis, do you have any other plans? <clears throat> after Les Mis Manila, you mean, uh, I'm going back to London, right? After we close, we're, uh, our last show is on the 1st of May, and then I'm doing the show in London. On the 9th of May naman, so, <laughs> ibang production yun, so sabi ko, litong-lito ako, <laughs> anong ginagawa ako, so anyway, uh, sana, yeah, balik ako sa London, and then I might extend there for a few more months, okay. and then I don't know yet what's gonna happen. Yeah. What else is your dream role? Of course, you've played Les Miserables, what else? Ah, uh, sa loob ng Les Mis, I, I really want to do Eponine. But I don't know if that's even possible from Fondine to Eponine. <laughs> Baliktad na, no? Pero tingnan natin, um, I want to do Wicked. I want to go green one day. <laughs> one day. Mm. Do you have any plans of trying Broadway in the future? <sighs> Oo, lahat pangarap naman yan, diba? Kung baga nagawa na natin yung West End, sana Broadway naman yung susunod. Sige, pag-pray natin. Sana. Did you have to read the <laughs> I did. Ganda siya kakapal, di ba? Oh, oh, ang tagal ko siya eh. Ang tagal ko naman. Um, I had to. I, I had to. Um, before doing Lebes, um, ang dami kong tinanong na, na mga tao kung anong dapat advice, kung anong dapat kong gawin. Um, and they said, just read the book. Mag-iiba yung atake ko. Sabi nga ni Ms. Leia, mag-iiba yung atake mo kapag binasa mo na yung story ni Fantine. And true enough, mas naintindihan ko yung, yung, yung buhay niya. And, um, I think nakatulong yun ng malaki sa akin. Mm -hmm. um, aesthetically, the production, the set, the costumes mm -hmm. are different. Mm -hmm. So, what else is different? What do you, what's different with your role? With my role, the, um, I think with the fight scenes of Fantine, this is more rough. I like it though. <laughs> I like it. Mas, mas intense. Mas nafe feel ko. Uh, may, may puso then. It's just so different. Um, in London, I love it because it's classic. We use the revolving stage. Kumbaga, walang screen sa likod. Dito naman, modernized version. Um, it's, it's just, the, the, my costume, it's, it's lighter here. 
dun sa London ang bigat eh, hindi ako makagalaw hindi ako makahinga with the corset um, so I guess here I'm more comfortable with my with my costume and uh, it's just different yeah yeah